if it is true that persistent inflation over the long run is caused by there being too much money created in the economy over time, then why does that happen? You know, why, why do monetary authorities create too much money if creating too much money causes inflation? What are the reasons why we have excessive money growth in some countries? Well, it is not the supply of money per se, or increases in the supply of money by itself that causes inflation. It is increases in the supply of money relative to the demand for money. So for a central bank to know what is the appropriate supply of money that the economy is going to need next year, it needs to know what the demand for money is going to be next year. And that's a difficult thing to know. Because the demand for money keeps growing over time. As an economy expands, people need more money to carry out the greater volume of transactions. So it has to anticipate how much the economy is going to grow to have an idea, a sort of base idea of how much the demand for money might grow. And then money demand is not tied exactly to the volume of transactions because payment habits change over time. Payment habits change because of technology. You know, uh, when credit cards were invented, then and, and came into widespread use, then people started having a, a lesser need to have money. And electronic payments also affect the demand for money. It depends also on what are the transactions that people are actually carrying out. So as the economy gets formalized, people tend to need less cash. People in the informal sector of a, of a country, of an economy, use more cash. So as, as the economy shifts from being more or less informal to being less or more formal, that affects the demand for money as well. So that has to be tracked and anticipated in, in, in the monetary authority, trying to figure out what the demand for money is going to be. And then on top of all of that, your demand for money fluctuates seasonally. The demand for money goes up in the summers and it goes up a lot at Christmas. So that has to be taken into account. So in trying to identify what is going to be the appropriate supply of money in the near future, it is not an exact deterministic mechanical process to match that to the demand for money given all of these considerations. And uh, we see examples of this uh, all the time. Christmas spending to push currency demand to 128 billion, says the central bank. A second difficulty is that undershooting underestimating the demand for money leads to a worse outcome than overshooting. If the money supply grows by money demand, all you get is inflation, a little more inflation. But if the money supply is less than the growth in money demand, then that interferes with the ability of the economy to actually grow. It strangles the economy. There is not enough money to, for, for banks to lend to businesses who, whose demand is increasing and they want to expand. So undershooting has, has nearly catastrophic consequences in terms of strangling an economy's growth and overshooting just gives you a little inflation. So it's better to overshoot. And, and finally, it happens in many countries 
where a government can compel a central bank to provide it with new money if the government wants. Now, this is a big temptation for governments because the alternative to financing a government expenditure with newly printed money is taxation. And taxation tends to be electorally unpopular. It's also difficult because of you know, tax evasion and the kind of complexity and administration it takes to effectively collect taxes. So the combination of those two means that governments in some countries are tempted to and succumb to the temptation to just have the central bank print new money and send it over for the government to spend. This is the reason why countries have sometimes accelerating inflation. And this is why you have hyperinflations. Freeze on wages is latest step to stand inflation in Zimbabwe. This is during the Zimbabwe hyperinflation. Well, the freeze on wages and the freeze on any prices is not going to accomplish anything because as the article goes on to say, the government continues to function by printing money to pay its bills. And the printing of money is going to fuel the fall in the value of money and therefore the rise in inflation. Inflation roars back in Venezuela. Economists have been warning for weeks of a spike in prices after the Maduro government cranked up the money printing presses in order to put cash in people's pockets and curry favor in the run-up to last month's constituent assembly vote. This is the compelling reason why central banks need to be constitutionally independent of the government. What it means to be an independent central bank is that whomever is the current government in the country cannot obligate the central bank to create money for the government. That the central bank needs to be sufficiently independent to conduct monetary policy without regard for the government needing cash. So it can focus on trying to estimate the demand for money and meeting it in an objective way. So one of the important institutional elements of a successful economy is to have the central bank being independent of the government. Economists sometimes talk about the inflation tax. How is inflation like a tax? Our understanding of why governments are tempted to use newly created money to pay for their bills helps us to understand why, why we tend to use the term inflation tax. In this example, our economy has a total annual income of $10,000 a year. It also has a money supply, coincidentally equal, at $10,000. So the flow of income is $10,000. The stock of money is $10,000. The government needs to raise $2,500 for some infrastructure project. Well, there are two options, taxation and money creation. It can levy an income tax of 25%. That means the $10,000 of income that citizens would otherwise receive ends up being a disposable income, a take-home pay of only $7,500 because $2,500 is extracted as income tax. 
government can pay for its infrastructure and individuals have less than their gross income that they have control over spending but as an alternative the government might not want to levy an income tax you know elections are coming up and it's an unpopular move so the government asked the central bank to create new money to print up two thousand five hundred dollars of new money and to send it over to the government to spend but that's going to create inflation ultimately of 25 percent which means that even though this economy's citizens still have ten thousand dollars you know nominally of money its purchasing power will have shrunk by 25 percent its purchasing power will have shrunk to what seven thousand five hundred dollars could have bought before the inflation so we end up with the same outcome if the government uses money creation we end up with the government having two thousand five hundred dollars to spend and the uh, and private citizens having only the equivalent having 25 percent less purchasing power than they did before even though they still have ten thousand dollars of nominal money and this is why economists use the term inflation tax it is not an actual tax at all but it operates like a tax that the government gets additional money and citizens end up having less so the inflation is like a tax but what is it a tax on income tax is a tax on income well the inflation tax using inflation to finance government spending ends up being like a tax on the holding of money if you don't hold any money if your wealth is in the form of a house and an expensive car then and you keep no cash you keep no money then inflation doesn't affect you because inflation reduces the value of money you end up losing purchasing power to the extent that you're holding money so inflation is like a tax on the holding of money so our takeaway is that monetary authorities can create inflation to ensure that economic growth is not strangled and also not such a good reason to avoid explicit taxation.